You're listening to the Pepper and Me podcast, Around the Dinner Table with Cherie, Cam and Lorne, where we chat all things food and business. All right, welcome to uh, Around the Dinner Table here. My name's Lorne, this is Cherie, and this is Stacey Jones with Hello. Flavours of Plenty. Is that right? Yep, Did I get yep, that right? Yep. Awesome. Yeah, Stacey does all sorts of things, so I thought it'd be a great time to have her on the podcast. Yeah. Um, you, you're probably best to introduce yourself, because you wear lots of different hats as well. <laughs> <laughs> I need no introduction. Um, yeah, so I wear four different hats, I reckon. Um, so yeah, the first one is I'm the chair of Flavours of Plenty. Um, so it's the Bay of Plenty's local food initiative to help nice. raise our, your profile and our story. Um, the second one is I am the founder of Kitchen Takeover, which is an immersive dining oh, concept. Oh, see, I'm learning things today yeah, as that's well. Me. <laughs> <laughs> What's the fourth one? Um, yes, yeah, so I write for Uno Magazine as a food oh, columnist. Nice. And the final and possibly the most important one is I'm a mum of three. And they yes. always want food. So I reckon yes. that's deeply interconnected. Amazing. <laughs> you certainly <laughs> like the, the heat hot show of food in the Bay of Flinty, yeah. I reckon. Oh, thank you. So it's <laughs> I don't awesome, know if that's true. But. Awesome, to, <laughs> awesome to have you on board. I know you mainly through... The Flavours of Plenty event. I actually spoke about it quite a lot on the podcast because um, it was such a such a great foodie event and I'm such a massive fan of what it's bringing to the Bay. I just think it's yeah. incredible and I was really excited to be a part of it. So, yeah, great to great to have you here. We'll just get to know you a bit better before we do our weeklies. We, yep. What's your background? Yeah, so, um, yeah, so I'm English, as you can probably tell by my silly accent. Um, yeah, so I grew up with a foodie mum, so my mum's a cordon bleu chef, and some of my first oh, memories wow. are making meringues with my mum, so I just kind of, I think I was hooked at that point. I came to New Zealand 12 years ago for just 12 weeks. Only 12 weeks? Just 12 weeks, and just kind of got bitten by the bug and the lifestyle and everything yeah. that I had to offer. So before I came here, I worked in marketing and advertising, so I worked for a few big brands like Sony and Nissan for a big advertising agency um, so I kind of learned a lot about kind of how to market something how to build a brand um, and how to kind of yeah leverage a story so that was kind of my basis but then I came to New Zealand and there wasn't really any big agencies in Mount Wanganui particularly at the time yeah. and I also started to get really interested in entrepreneurialism um, when I came to New Zealand I just kind of couldn't believe that like pretty much everyone had their own business that kind of blew my mind yeah coming yeah. from London and yeah. like you know everyone you you don't you don't have your own business you work for someone right. else right. um so I just really fell in love with that idea and yes yeah, so I had a business it was a kind of like a fashion business my first business and I really enjoyed like learning about digital marketing because at that time that was really kind of coming to the fore but I just didn't really care enough about fashion so I sold that <laughs> um and then I went to work for um, a couple of local government agencies and there I kind of learned lots about events and how to put on big events Mm -hmm. and then I did that for a bit and then I just couldn't stop thinking about food because I'm just completely food obsessed and so I decided yeah that I would take the leap and try and combine my passion for food with yeah events, I guess events and marketing, marketing yeah and perfect kitchen takeover what so. a perfect <laughs> little cauldron of skills isn't yeah. it it's incredible yeah I feel yeah. really blessed that very I've very to do that. very very cool mm. put, all, put all those into a pot and see what you're doing now that's awesome so cool tell us about kitchen takeover yeah yeah so um kitchen takeover is probably about five years old um, when I came to the Bay around 12 years ago, there wasn't a huge food culture. I think it's tons better now. Um, and I kind of really kind of felt that I missed not being able to get experiences like I could find in London. Right. And then one day someone turned around to me and they were like, oh, I have to go to Auckland if I want a nice dinner. And I was like, right, that's it. I am changing this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so true. Yeah. So the, I wanted to do food, but I didn't want to have a restaurant. Um, and I wanted to kind of use my marketing skills and my event skills and kind of just offer something just that felt like the big city. Yeah. So, yes, yeah, so the Kitchen Takeover was born. So the first one was um, 24 people. Yeah, it was a small team. I was in... Um, yeah, I was in the kitchen um, with Shay and myself and yeah, it was 24 people. It was 10 courses of wow. Vietnamese kind of food wow. and yeah, almost died from that level of hard work. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, loved it and really yeah. felt like there was something in there. Actually, that was a sponge drop as well. So Danny oh, was amazing. She kind right. of lent a hand and wow. that was used their venue. Um, yeah. And then the next one I did was the first time that I tried secret location and that was um, when I met Shane Yardley. And um, so Shane now works at the Polytech, but his background is he kind of was Simon Galt's right hand man for such a long time yeah. amazing chef like mm. incredible and so we kind of teamed up and yeah one thing led to another and before I knew it I was feeding like hundreds of people not mm. and it sells people. out every night it's incredible like it's yeah, such it a smart so... way to do a, a get that restaurant satisfaction without 
having the restaurant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I reckon that's Brilliant. so true. Yeah, and we're really lucky. Like we we seem to sell out. I think it's a combination of kind of a unique idea, quite a kind of unique experience, and then I guess the other part of it is just because I've got that marketing now, so I kind of know how to yep. position how things and make things yeah. Yeah, sell a story, yeah. which is kind of handy. The secret location makes it really fun to. It's a little like bit a excitement. scarcity kind of thing. It's like FOMO, right? People are really. you know they don't want to miss out on something like that. What if well, you provide an experience yeah. rather than just a meal? Yeah. I guess totally and. That's what people crave. That's what we don't have here. You're right. Mm. It's something very, yeah. very different. How often do you run them? Um, it varies, but kind of once every few months. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So we, yeah. And it's kind of grown and grown. And in a funny old way, like it's kind of, we're trying to find ways to make sure that we can almost get a little bit smaller again. Yep. Like, cause yeah, as things grow, you know, there's growing pains. Yep. Yes. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of, it's quite special and we, we genuinely like love food and care about how people like the experience that they have and I think for me and probably for you guys as well but like my favorite memories are always focused on food like they're always around a table yes. eating something yummy always. Yep. <laughs> yeah pretty much exactly and so together, it, it does and so I love that idea that we can bring people together and kind of give them really lovely memories and like when people come up to me and they're like oh I just had such a good time that was such a great memory thank you that's kind of what gives me that buzz yeah mm. yeah very cool. And the ambiance that you provide and like the whole setup, every like yeah. the the outfits, everything. Yeah, there's definitely lots of effort. Very, very it. cool. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. I loved it. You'll have to go to the next one. I know. One. Yeah, what's, what's coming up? Is there one coming up? Sorry. Yeah, there is gonna be one coming up. Well we've got um not like well, we've got one going to Wellington. So we've got our first oh. ever um kitchen takeover going to Wellington. It's with Casey and Karina Bird. Yeah. Um so we're doing that um in a couple of weeks. Um and it runs from the eleventh to the twenty first of May. Um, so yeah, Kitchen wow. Takeover was going to Wellington, which is kind of scary, but yeah. exciting. How um, are you getting all your stuff down there? Oh, yeah. someone's driving a big truck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Basically with yeah. Loads, of, loads of crap in it. I just had a um, meeting this morning about so doing a similar kind of thing, like taking people and me at food and wine dinner on yeah. tour. I was like, how yeah. would you get all this stuff? Yeah. Yeah. I just can't, I can't like, comprehend the logistics we of it. We should have a conversation. <laughs> 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 um, yeah. yeah, so yeah, so that's kind of exciting, and we've got truffle hunts coming up, and also I've seen those advertised, yeah. and I'm all over that. And then yeah. the dinner at Sugo. With yeah, the we're gonna truffles. do a, yeah lunch at Sugo. At yeah, Sugo. Two, two cost lunch at Sugo. I'm yeah. I'm hundred percent into it. it. Yeah. yeah, and Ian's amazing. Like we, I worked with him on a, on a dinner the other day, and he's he's just kind of yeah, he's a cool chef. He knows he's what very he's cool. Doing and he's I'm a huge fan like, of yeah. Ian. Yeah, huge fan. Yeah, totally. Just a lovely guy. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, and the truffle hunts are fun. Like Maureen and Colin, they've just they're you know they grow amazing truffles like they mm. genuinely do they're in Amersfield and Ahi and in all the big restaurants and yeah. stuff like that so and you know you you know all about them so it's quite nice that Tapuki is basically the mecca now oh, yeah. of truffles <laughs> and you go down as like a pick your own kind of thing well I don't think you get to keep them because they're oh. worth like thousands of dollars oh, right. <laughs> exactly. yeah but, you get um, to go on a hunt with them yeah. <laughs> you go hunt with is it the dog is it dogs yeah you go oh because they sniff them out right dogs. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I really want this year my life goal is to have my own giant truffle and I'm just going to put just oh. truffles on it. Just you should on do it. So good. Yeah. <laughs> so you have to get a dog and train a dog to sniff No, out I'm going to go to the truffle. No. I'm just going to come to hunt and pull a big truffle I'm out. I'm going to buy <laughs> on my Pepper and Me club card. Mm. Giant <laughs> truffle. <laughs> It'll be fine. Cut you off. Yeah, awesome. Cool. I went to the um, I went to the last kitchen takeover and it was incredible, but I made it an absolute fatal error. You'll be embarrassed about this. I, I, I made the mistake of going out for lunch beforehand yep. oh. and my friend had just gotten back from Australia. So I was very excited <laughs> at lunch. So we had like five bottles of wine and oh. it was almost dinner time. We're like, oh, we'll just stop at Solera. We'll have some more wine. And by the time I got to dinner, I was actually hammered. Yeah. I, was <laughs> hammered. I will vouch for you. you yeah. <laughs> we were all hammered. Yeah. It was so bad. I actually stopped drinking for a month yeah. after that. I was like, that was bad. <laughs> that was bad behavior from me. <laughs> Wow. And every all the staff yeah. had come from other restaurants and got got around quite quickly. Like someone had said, "Oh, I saw Shri at dinner last night. She was hammered." <laughs> You've got to have those okay, though, right? this is not <laughs> good. <laughs> Made a bit of a name for yourself, <laughs> eh? Oh, I really did. I'm ne I've never never done that before. Usually, I can keep a lid on it, but it's actually the excitement. Like, <laughs> It was excitement. I know what you mean, though. Like, you yeah. get let out and you're at nice It was. Places and my friend and... literally just landed from yeah. Australia. So yeah. he was fizzing and <laughs> everyone was fizzing. And yeah, <laughs> it didn't end well. 
<laughs> so yeah, I'll, I'll, try I, won't, again. I won't make that mistake. That, that was the end of long lunch, basically. I was like, last year, all last year, I was telling everyone, I'm like, I've, found, I've nailed life. You go for long lunch, you can drink all afternoon, you sit in the sun, you have a beautiful time, you go home at eight o'clock and go to bed. And it's just that's like, my, it's like, it doesn't work if you've got to go out for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Not good. Hey. yes, but I've learned my lesson now. Okay. And I had a sober January to make up for it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. the remorse. <laughs> I did feel the remorse. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We'll move on. Yeah. What's, so you're passionate, obviously, about food. Massive, massive yes, food. Yes, I'm really so obsessed good. with food. Yeah. yeah. What, yeah. Are, what, else, uh, what else drives you? What are your... No, just food. No, yeah, just, that's, <laughs> that's, that's all I do. That's mine. That's mine. <laughs> no, I, I do love food. Like it, it really is like a genuine passion and an interest for me. And I feel like I always kind of come back to that. And that's what makes me happy and excited. But I kind of guess the other part of that is just like new ideas and innovation. That's mm. what gets me super excited. Like I really do kind of feel like almost like, you know, the energy when you're like, oh, I feel like that's really exciting and creative and yeah. Yeah, taking things from a different angle. Yeah, I feel that too. And I love when people are doing really interesting cool things yeah and exactly I fe- like like you said about people being in business and I feel like Mount Side everyone's doing their own thing everyone yeah. I know has their own thing mm. and it's just incredible it's, yeah I just love getting to know them and seeing how they tick and yeah yeah everyone just goes for it it's a really really cool community it's it very, is very great definitely and I think in like particularly in New Zealand like you just it's there's no expectation to have your own business but if you do like it's completely normal where it's I don't think it's like that in the UK maybe Mm. it's because when I before I left I was a bit younger and I wasn't that exposed to entrepreneurialism or I didn't even think that it was an option but I just love the fact that Kiwis are just kind of number eight wire get up and Mm. just do Do it it. yeah just get on with it and that's just great feeling it's the best part of our culture Mm, it is I reckon it is definitely very very cool Mm. yeah food's definitely my driving factor behind everything I do so food oh and eating as well yeah, eating. Do you, do you cook? Do you cook? <laughs> God, yeah, 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 yeah. tons. Cool. Yeah. In fact, this morning I had a bit of a like a hero moment, and it sounds a bit silly because it's probably the most simple thing, but I don't think I've ever fully nailed the cheese scone, and mm. I finally oh. did it this morning, and I was like, I was dancing around the. What kitchen. did you do? What well, did... I'm really into this blog called Cook the Perfect um, with Felicity Cloak, and she she's been doing it for years, but she basically takes like a really stock standard thing, like it might be like a spaghetti bolognese or a fish pie, just like not crazy food, but yeah. just good food. You're taking notes. And then mm. she she basically <laughs> cooks it like every different way you can. Yep. Like so, she goes to like the chefs that work in that oh, space. So it's right. Italian. She might go through like Ottolenghi and Jamie Oliver or whoever. Yeah, yeah. And then she cooks it loads of different ways, and at the end she gives you the perfect recipe. Yep. Uh. And often it is like. Like the perfect recipe. Wow. It was like it was it was perfect. They were perfect. That's so so cool. I was giving Danny from SpongeBob a run for her money. <laughs> I love that. I do similar, but I do the most easy way. I I, I like to give Just people to assess what everyone else is doing and yeah. then make it really easy yeah. for people. <laughs> Which it may not be the best, but it's something everyone can do at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've got a cookbook in me, which is like the Nutri-Bullet cookbook for busy mums. I've got about 15 <laughs> recipes where I can put it in the Nutri-Bullet <laughs> Nutri- and it can be done within between one to two Amazing. minutes. It's <laughs> so good. It's like the whole thing, kind of thing, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I actually never knew you had children. Yes, I've got three. You told me school pick up yesterday. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah well yeah. done. Thanks. Well, you're, yeah, yeah. People probably think the same to me. I guess yeah, I was going to say too, but I always see you out and about and yeah, um, yeah running evening things. and Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a juggle. balance, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, definitely. And the kids are great. They're How old are they? Um, Marlo's nearly five. Oh, well, close to five anyway. And Jakey's nearly nine and Florence is, is eight. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. Oh, They're amazing. great though. They're funny. Yeah. I call it the creative chaos. It's yes. just constantly kind of... Yep creatively chaotic but fun and yeah. joyful and Perfect. every now and then it's awful <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah I feel that's, that yeah you've got to take the hard you know hard days with the good ones and like I think that's that quote isn't there which is like the days are long but the years are short mm. and I really buy into that as a parent like mm. once true. you're like oh it's yeah, it's you know. scary every now and then. I find the same thing often. Like things are great, 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 and then I have those. Like March was really hard. November was really hard, and yeah. then by the end of the month, you can see it in the kids, and yeah. the, you're like, "Wow, I really need to yeah. get the balance back to where it needs to be." Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, yeah. Those work months definitely come up every now and then and take over. Yeah, and I think when you're like passionate about your business, like, and you want to keep on pushing forward, like 
there's that constant tension, isn't there, between like, oh, I just want to like do this thing and like make it successful and put my all into it. But then you've also like, I also want to like, you know, be with my kids and be the best mum I can be. And like, yeah. the honest truth of it is like, well, I personally think is like, it's a total fallacy that there is a balance because there just isn't. Like you might feel balanced for like, eight minutes on a Monday when you've managed to like pack the lunches and do 15 minutes of yoga and then two seconds later someone will be like you've put eggs in my lunch box <laughs> I hate eggs and you're like oh. yeah. but you know that's part of like yeah if you just I think my, my sister gave me a piece of advice when I had the third she was like honestly just let your standards drop it will be fine and yeah. I think that's so true yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, don't sweat it like we can't all be perfect all the time the lower your you know? expectations the yeah. less you're let down yeah, yeah. yeah. If you have no expectations then you can't be there let you go yeah right, like. 100% <laughs> my kids probably don't know what to expect from me they're either going to come home sit down to the table with me I can have their water and a wine glass and we'll have a beautifully set table with candles and yeah. a two course meal <laughs> or I'll throw a piece of bread at them like yeah, don't they? the other keep them on their toes that's yes, what I say absolutely, absolutely. Mix it up. I think that's preparing them for the real world yeah exactly <laughs> okay. all right we'll dive into our weekly bits so what we we just have Start by talking about what we've eaten this week or cooked, yes. um, best or worst. Yeah. Do you want to start? Or? Yeah, I did ribs on the weekend and I did um, some barbecue pulled pork as well. Um, on your, just on the barbecue. What's your barbecue again? It's a Broil King. Broil King. Pellet one. So it's, it, it's, a, it's a lazy one because you just I've push the button and, and it's yeah. a pellet, but it gives yeah. you like the flavour mm. and it's delicious. Yeah. Mm. Um, and they last forever. Oh, they like so grunty good. old mm. renders. Yeah. yeah. So, um, cause we've got backpackers now, so I can like cool. backpack bulk the cook. meat and bulk cook it. So now instead of doing like one rack of ribs on this massive barbecue and using like $20 worth of pellets or whatever it is, I'm just going to like fill up the whole barbecue Yum. once a month and do it. And then we... invite me around your house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Just deliver all the backpack, yeah, <laughs> yeah, backpack yeah. portions yeah. to everyone. <laughs> exactly. Frozen, and bring it into work. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, handy. Yeah. And then on the weekend we went to, ah, oh, what is it called? In Rotorua in the forest. Oh, oh Eastwood. 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 It's good in that. Yeah. yeah it's, good. it's like, it was almost, we were trying to figure out where we should go um, out for lunch on Sunday and the decision was to drive to Rotorua so we could drop the kids off at Hades' parents and go out to Eastwood rather oh, than yeah. going anywhere in Tauranga. Because I was That's like, anywhere I'd want to go in Tauranga, I don't really feel like taking a newborn and a three-year-old. Yeah, <laughs> yeah fair enough. Yeah, Because the nice places, I'm like, nah, it doesn't really feel like toddler or like the island's the only place you could go to. But yeah, I think it was such an down opportunity, rain, isn't so it, for like, kids sort of Yeah, things. I remember when my kids were your age, like yeah. you basically go where there's a play area. Yeah. And that was the criteria. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Or somewhere where you can drop them off with the in laws. Yes, exactly. <laughs> well, yeah. that I did. I believe that Burger Burger's got a good Burger player. Burger has a good spot, yeah. yeah, but I don't yeah. really enjoy eating there. Yeah. 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 Anyway, we went there. We had the wood fired pizza, is always really good there, but we had the caprese, and the tomato was like sliced to like a centimeter thick. Oh, on yeah. This thin based sort of pizza. And I'm like, that was, it was just felt really weird eating it because it was like you're like the. Oh, it was too thick. Yeah, it was too thick. Oh. And it was like slopping off the piece of pizza. Ah. Um, should have should have it just been like a really thin slice of tomato on a thin pizza. Okay. You know? Like not like a massive. Trying thick. to do something different. That's interesting because the crew went there when they were at the food show. Oh, eh? we always go there and get pizzas. And like, you, you, delicious. you usually like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. But right. I think um. I, think I don't know, maybe great, it was it's just a great a, spot in the oh, Redwoods. And the yeah, kids so can, so there's good. a massive field yeah, the kids so can much run around on. So much around. Or um, if you've got a dog. Did you give them that feedback? I think you should give them that feedback. Yeah, maybe I should. Because otherwise, they're not going to know. Yeah. In a nice way. In a nice way. Yeah. Yeah, I've got something else from you. know. It is. Yep. You actually need to know. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it's quite hard to say it, but I think, like, if you can be constructive about it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We'll I appreciate and, feedback. Put this and tag them. Well, <laughs> don't, don't, don't publicly shame them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just did. <laughs> uh, no, I, I think I just did. To, uh, <laughs> I think we have to be fair. Okay. Well, that's good. Yeah. Delicious, what about though, you? We always go there. Stacey. Um, I've had a couple of, um, yeah, so the last Friday I went to Solera and they had a Solariac um, that they'd kind of roasted and barbecued on the hearth with a black truffle sauce. Yeah. Mm. It was so good. Yeah. Like it was really like, because I Solariac's just so underrated, I reckon. Yeah. And also I probably would never have cooked it in just like a big 
like celeriac whole mm. like they didn't cut it up or anything it was just yeah it was absolutely delicious because they do their cauliflower and yes. that is great it's their standout dish yeah it? and yeah. it is a standout but then yeah they did it with celeriac and it was it was so good okay cool i must so I definitely would rec- recommend um checking that out and then i made a really good um do you know like nasu den gaku it's like the aubergine with like a miso sauce oh, dressing yum. Yum. i smoked all the aubergines yep. and it just like gave it that like next oh. level of yeah, it was kind of a insane. cross between um, like baba ganoush and nasu, and it was off the charts. If I Yum. had to say to myself, because my husband got home from work and he'd been stuck in a traffic jam, and I was like, "I made you this," and he was like, "This is amazing." <laughs> <laughs> okay. Did you smoke? You smoke it on your barbecue? Yeah, or yeah. were you just on the hob or whatever? Yeah, under right. the grill. Yeah, yeah, like skin them all yeah. and made the sauce yeah. with like sucking and miso and stuff. It was really good. Oh, and yeah. with loads of TikTok on oh, the top because oh, I'm obsessed with TikTok. Like, yeah, I am good, literally obsessed. Okay. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Excellent. That's, yeah, that's, that's good. Good to know. Cool. I um I had a fail the other night. Oh, well, what two nights ago? I've just moved house. I just moved to Papmore. Yeah. And I've unpacked. So My flipped. kitchen's all set up like beautifully, and everything's in the containers. But some of the containers weren't the jars weren't labelled. And I took home the packet of our Parmigiana crumb, which is really nice. It's like a panko base with some tomato flakes and Parmesan and herbs through it. And but I do half normal panko half that for the kids and then it's quite yeah. like mellow so I poured in my half panko and then I went to cook it and I realised I hadn't used panko I'd used coconut and coconut. was it a fail though or well yep the, the coconut parmigiana was not really a vibe no <laughs> <laughs> the kids ate it <laughs> and like it was edible it wasn't terrible but it, I was I love crumb chicken I like love crumb chicken and I was like, I'll do some nice like pasta or something like that. and then I was like oh no this is not a vibe at all um, so I fed it to the kids and then I had okay, kids around last night so I fed it to all them and wraps last night there. <laughs> but yeah, I was a little bit gutted. I've actually had a, do you know what I had last week? I had like the best cooking week in my life. I made the best result I've ever made. I made the most beautiful Moroccan pumpkin and white bean soup with whipped feta. Oh, I made. Sounds amazing. Um, I just had a week. I was just like on, on fire. fire. Yeah. And then I've just had this week complete fails i made two mince dishes uh yeah i was trying to do like a one pot where you cook i did the mince tomatoes uh and then you add stock and then you cook put the raw pasta in i was was trying to like i think i'm like i need to work on a recipe for that because people love that yeah it's a great idea yeah um and it wasn't did you eat it i ate it i mean it was edible but it wasn't great it it was the spaghetti doesn't like cook that well is that what it i used penne and it actually cooked it did. Just fine. As long as you've got enough liquid in there. Like there was yeah, a litre yeah. of stock in there. It's hard though because you need heaps of stock in there to cook the pasta. But then, and then it's, the sauce goes a bit dry. Or a bit or runny. A bit runny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It never sort of ends up as a nice, I don't know. Like, yeah, it was all right. It just, it really was really lacking some colour. It kind of looked like pale, like yeah. slop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it, I don't know if, to, like, I, I'm not an amazing cook by like, any means, but I, I, I usually manage to make it look. I could have put some herbs and something. I don't know. I was like, oh, no, I'm done with that. And then I made, Jess had an idea, which was a good idea. She's like, why don't you do like a nice mince dish with a uh, scallop potato top oh, on top of the mince and then bake that. Potato, yeah. But I did the potatoes quite thin and then I've got home cool mince and there was a massive layer of fat on the top and it came on top of the potatoes. And <laughs> that didn't, wasn't look, didn't look good either. And she's like, no, you should have done like chunky potatoes, maybe parboiled them, done a nice thick mince, like finish the mince. And then literally done the scallop potato and then grilled it for and maybe just 10 minutes. It, so the, kind of the concept was there both times, but I didn't execute it well either time. But you, you like that's what's kind of nice about fanning, isn't it? Is you kind of go, okay, yep. I yeah. Know. You know how to yeah. do it better. I yeah. It's frustrating when you can't get it right. But yeah. You know. <laughs> but on Saturday night, I did the ragu. Um, and I used my home kill beef. I used chuck steak sausages in a top side, and I did a massive pot. Oh, I would have fed 20 people with that. But I love doing rigu like that, and you can yeah. just freeze it down. Yeah. And I cooked it all day, and I made the best focaccia I've ever probably made in my life. And I had like 12 people around for dinner, and, and the first, well, second meal in the new home. And I pulled my outdoor table in, and we had a beautiful long table, and it was great. I can seat 12 people and nice. feed them super easy, so that oh, was cool. like lovely. And I've got gas at my new house, oh, and my life has changed. I'm just so happy. So um, gas and like a double... What did you have before? Induction. I didn't even have induction. She she spent like spent like a year thinking that she had induction. Yeah, and I was like, this is terrible. Why would anyone have induction? Shh. Sure, it's not induction. (laughs) (laughs) But in all of her TikToks, just put it. You know, this is safe on induction cooktop, and everyone's like, no, that doesn't look like induction to me. (laughs) Yeah, no, it wasn't. As soon as you moved into your house, you had the same one, and you changed it out like two Uh, weeks later. Literally. 
Yeah. So I've it's been struggling yeah. along with that for three years. Oh. Yeah. I'm building my well. I'm designing my kind of kitchen of my dreams at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. I saw the architect today, and he was like, "Oh, you know, like we were like, do you reckon it's going to be in budget?" And we were like, he, he was like, mm, "Well, he was like, no. depends what kind of kitchen you have. Like, if it's like a forty grand kitchen, then probably." And I was like, "No, it's not going to be." <laughs> 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 it's all not Good luck. Like. <laughs> not in budget. <laughs> I changed the budget. <laughs> I did. I um, went down to the new general at the lakes yesterday. They're yeah. sort of halfway through their changeover, yeah. and I had the French toast, which is something I would never order in my life because I don't I'm not a sweet tooth and I definitely don't do sweets for breakfast but it's just so beautiful yeah and I wanted to see it on the plate so I had that that looked amazing the food down there is looking amazing like so you actually ate the french toast yeah yeah it was it. good it was great yeah it was amazing. actually great I'm excited about them down there I think yes. they do a great job I'm excited yeah. too I yeah. saw uh we tried the kotu roti the other day and that was like a it's a shrank, Sri Lankan street food so it was roti and then stir fried cabbage and spices with uh, an egg through it and yeah. I just I think it needed a bit more spice, but I told them that, so they're gonna. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm yeah, giving nice all the feedback. Yep. Um, <laughs> yeah, so they're going really well down there. Nice. And then we had pizza from Basilico on Friday oh, yeah. night. Where's yeah. that? It's in Papama. Oh, yeah. It's oh, Sandhurst. Sandhurst. Oh, it's yeah. actually beautiful. Cool. Yeah, that was yeah great. it was expensive yep. for pizza, like uh, uh, probably standard wood fired pizza prices. Yeah, I guess so. True. But when you're getting takeaway pizza, I guess yep. you're like, oh. Yep. Lauren put it on the work card, and I saw there was like a charge for eighty dollars. I was like, "Oh, that's good." And then underneath it, there was another two hundred and forty. <laughs> I was like, "What's less good?" Pizza was three hundred and twenty dollars. No. And Mum's going, "Mum's going, oh, I'll transfer Lauren some money." I was like, "Dad was trying to give me money when I left, and I said, "Nah, look, it's a shareholders meeting." Yeah, I was like, "I would be willing to be at Lauren's, but I'll check the account right now." Lauren has put not spent three hundred and twenty dollars on pizza. It wasn't three hundred and twenty. It literally was. No, it was two hundred. And 40 plus another... No, 200 plus another 40. But the 40 was because <laughs> I had to get the tiramisu's and the chocolate mousse. Yeah, and they, they were, they were, they were, they were, they were so great. You actually had to get those yes. as well. That's They're delicious. Yeah. Yeah. No regrets. Yeah. So I guess that's kind of my new local. Yeah. Nice. Um, but nice yeah, I've just good. been enjoying cooking at home, so that's been really nice. Yeah. Very nice. Um, yeah, all right, we better move on. Um, food trend. Yes. Have you got a food trend? Well, do you know what? It's funny because like every time I go on like Instagram, I see a butterboard. Oh, yeah. Oh, why? <laughs> like, that's still around. Why is it still going? Yeah, like, yeah, it should be, oh, it like, be banned. It drives me bonkers. Yeah, in the bin. Um, I, was reading, I was reading the other day that swicy is a, getting, becoming a big thing, which is like a combination of like sweet and spicy food. Oh. It's quite a kind of like Korean, like kind of focused yes. yeah. type of flavor. Yes. So like stuff like strawberry jam and Korean chicken wings kind of vibe. Yep. And like yeah. hot honey, that hot honey's hot taking Hot honey, yeah. hot honey, yeah. Big fan of that, thing. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah. So that kind of like, yeah. Fried chicken with cool. like maple syrup and then like fresh chilies sliced over top. Yeah, or like a sweet, oh, like a chili good. jam. Yeah, yep. I'm always in for a chili jam. How would jam? Um, Swicy. Swicy, Swicy. I know. I was like, like that's great. <laughs> Swicy. I like it. Swicy. Swicy. Can cool. we make a new product just so we can call it Swicy? Swicy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> swicy. yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Sweet, I like that. Uh, I'm a fan of that one. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah I quite yeah. Not I a fan of the butterboard, but no. I do. I am a big fan of a hummus board. Yes. And like smearing uh, yeah. that on a platter and yeah. then decorating it with his guitar and yeah, yeah. butter and herbs yeah. and olive oil. I think nice. that looks quite nice. Not butter Not though, right? Butter. And especially no. the sweet butter boards. I'm like yeah, that's just why. Nice. We did a chocolate mousse board for someone's yes, birthday. Yes, I did do a chocolate mousse board. Yeah. That yeah. sounds yeah. like a good idea. Yeah, that was, quite <laughs> that was quite fun. That was quite was exciting. That was OTT. Oreos, ridiculous. Uh, yeah. Mine was the, um, this has been massive this week, the burger taco. So Ooh. you get a wrap, you squash mints onto it, fry it mints face down, pull oh, it out, yes. and then put Flip cheese, over. iceberg, burger sauce, onions and pickles in it. Oh, yeah. I, Everywhere I would have been sent it two hundred times yesterday. Keto friendly, yeah, kind of I guess. If you have a keto and of some sort. but I can see why people think it's nice. But I knew it would be. I was like, if you lift that crispy mince up underneath there, you're gonna have like a borderline raw like soggy mince and like a soggy kind yeah. of like a smash burger kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, so I don't. I I hadn't been keen to make it, but I made it before and it looked okay. But the yeah. I wouldn't make it again. It, it's definitely not going to be a staple in people's house. I don't think I wouldn't no. make it again. But I've made it across that off the list. The other yeah. one, yeah. So I've made that. That was the, that was my food trend anyway. Nice, nice. What was yours? I don't have trends. I thought we were talking about icks. Yes, that was next on my list. <laughs> Foods that give you the ick. 
<laughs> Foods that give me the ick. Yeah. yeah. And I guess like an example is of seeing a fly in a food cabinet. You know, like if you see a big fat blowfly like sitting on a food and you're oh, like. Like, I mean, absolutely. Yeah. Like, that just kind of, ick. that's just not right, is yeah. it? Yeah. Nah. Yeah. And then, yeah, what have you got? Oh, uh, my one's kind of weird. Yeah, well, that's fine. But, but it's, um, <laughs> when you get like a scone from like a thing and it's takeaway, right? Yeah. And they put it in one of those bags and they put a napkin under it. Mm-hmm. And then when you pull it out, you have to like peel the soggy napkin yeah. off the oh. bottom of the scone. <laughs> and you can't even use the napkin to yeah, wipe your fingers because it's soggy. Nothing. And it's like, you know, cheap little napkin. So like half of it's peeled off the bottom. And then you just end up with this mess. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Oh, and then so the same it was you. we got these slices actually at, um, at Eastwood again. And they put the slices on a thing. And then they put the slice on a napkin. And I'm like, just... You're not making it look pretty by putting the slice on a napkin. You're not like styling the plate. You put some napkins on top of the bag. Serves no purpose. Just, yeah. just yeah. don't yeah. worry about the napkin. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm with you yeah. on that. Yep. You know. Yeah. Yep. Anyway, yeah. so that was a weird one. Okay. Yep. Good. Yep. I mean, mine's just like I just cannot deal with raw onion. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, and I want to love raw onion, but I, I reckon I'm almost allergic to it. it really? Just, as soon as I eat it, it like ruins something for me. I just so like on a burger it. and everything, anything like that, and like, a salsa. Yeah, yeah. Red you onion as well. It. Yeah. If it's been even lightly blanched, it's fine. But yeah. like, it just gives me like. What about what pickled? Because I guess that's still technical. I can you think will. I can do a pickle because essentially it's cooked. You know, like it's, the acid yeah. is cooked. Yeah. Yeah. What like, about? Like a shallot vinegar on an oyster. Okay, that is my only exception. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the most <laughs> perfect thing on the yeah. yeah, there isn't more anything more perfect on the earth than that. Yeah. So let's face yeah. it, I yeah. can I can totally take okay. that. I love that. <laughs> uh, we had Lisa Rooney on last week and she uh, cumin. She hates cumin. Oh, yeah. I was like, God, that'd be hard to work. That with. would be hard and sad. Yeah, I would really. That <laughs> yeah. would, I would mourn the loss of a yeah. cumin seed. Yeah. What have I written down? Oh, <laughs> when you get a pizza and they put too much cheese on it, mm. and then there's like a puddle of oil on top of the cheese. That's just like, yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. No one needs that much cheese. It's disturbing. Do you put cheese on the bottom or the top of your um, pizza toppings? Bottom. Bottom. So yeah. you go like. Yeah, I do cheese sauce cheese. Toppings. Toppings. Yeah, do I? Yeah. No, actually, I don't think I do. I think I do top. the other way around, yeah. I've been cheese toppings. on top of the toppings. Yeah, I reckon. I depends because I often use like a tiny bit of like a grated yep. mozzarella on the bottom. Yep. And then if I'm doing like prosciutto or something, and then I'll finish it with a little bit of parmesan. Yep. Or if I've got, if I'm doing caprese, I'll do a little bit of mozzarella on the bottom and the tomatoes and then your fresh yep. yeah, that's mozzarella true. on the top with the basil. Yeah. So they do. No hard and I've always been a, on top because, like, that's the part that you want to get all grilled and melted, and you know. And then you can't the, see anything. Yeah, no, but yeah. <laughs> yep. Anyway, this yeah. is this is a topic of discussion a in my conundrum. household. Mm. <laughs> Haley okay. always likes it. Um, the toppings on top, like. Yeah. I thought you were going to say Haley always likes it on top. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I paused to like, to like change my words around. <laughs> um, the, uh, the other thing that I had, this is real random, but Dad does it. What does he do? <laughs> you know when you make a sandwich, bread sandwich with the knife, and then you and then you cut it, and then you have a dirty yes. knife. swipes it on top of it. he swipes it on top of the bread. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> Every time he wipes his like he cleans his knife off on top of the sandwich. <laughs> and I don't know. I don't it's so uh, random, eh? I don't know anyone else who does that, but it just makes the sandwich like so much less appealing instantly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's so funny. That's what made me come up with this whole segment. <laughs> I just don't know if that's was he making a sandwich for you on the weekend or the kids or something? The kids. You yeah, yeah, I think yeah. I just saw it. Yeah, yeah, and I was like, that's such a dead thing to do. I wonder if anyone else like does that, <laughs> wipes their knife off on top of the <laughs> Classic uh, dad was here. Move. You've got to do it. Like, do it on the like inside, inside. and then, yeah. Yeah, but he does it. He'll, like he'll when the kids make half, a sandwich, eh? there's yeah. a knife with half a jar of marmite sat next to the sandwich, on the which bench. is just as bad. <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah, is he doing it because he wants to reuse the knife? I think so. Right. Or, yeah, maybe it, like because it is annoying to clean off butter, I guess, in the in the sink. The you know, it's probably a generation nice heavy thing to do. Yeah, <laughs> it's a poll. I need a poll. I need to yeah. know. Surely, Does anyone else do that? Day? Yeah, exactly. Or not? <laughs> 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 Random, eh? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's that's us for the weekly 
weekly bits. We're bang on time there. We got anything on it, Pepper and me? Yeah, we do. We've got so much on. So we just had like five pallets of packaging arrive. Beautiful. Means the next few weeks are just going to be bagging machine, bagging machine. Excellent. And I'm going to be so happy to see that machinery that we invested <laughs> all of our money in that's been sat there doing nothing. <laughs> and it's, it's finally come to fruition. Yeah. Nice. So everyone and will start seeing the new pepper and yeah, bags. Yeah, so there'll be, so there'll be a whole stack of and medium-sized bags and some um, throwbacks to the Advent calendar products showing up soon, yep. really soon, and we're bringing back the scone mixes, talking about scones. Oh, funny. Yeah, yeah. They were a um, huge hit. They were yeah, the gluten-free awesome. scone mix. Yeah, yeah. So there's going to be a whole heap load of new products and new variants of products. Yeah, we're in. moving away from a lot of the jars and just trying to, yeah. Different size bags, so you'll be able to have a refill bag. Got some shakers on the way. Shakers on the it'll, way. It'll be quite a big change in the look of yep. everything for us. So we take a while to work through that, but that'll yep. be good. Well, oh, we're at the home show this weekend. It'll be done by the time we put this it'll podcast be done by out. The time we so put the Tauranga home out. show, and then we're at the Wellington home show in three weeks. So you yes. doing what you doing like selling product and cooking demos? Yeah, or? I don't yeah. know. I'm not doing a demo this weekend. Um, because I've only just decided to go. Yep. <laughs> I, I knew I was moving, so I thought I'd, I'd not commit to anything. But yeah. I think I'm doing something in Wellington. I've just decided I'll go down to Wellington for the for the show. So that'll be cool. Cool. Yeah. Nice. I'm actually looking forward to that. I've never really done anything in Wellington, so cool. It'll be nice to. And the home show this weekend will be real interesting because we went to the Rotorua home show and it went really well. Yes. Because oh. there was only like two or three food places. That's mm. cool. Especially serving um, mm. samples. Yeah. yeah. Whatever I did. You go to that show. show. Yes. yes. Nice. Yeah. Like I it. hadn't so really thought of that, but that, the home show, the, the Rotorua one went amazing. It was incredible. So just lots of people well. buying stuff and like interested in yeah, kind of and well. because at the home show there's a lot of like big ticket items. People going, you know, like swimming pools, pools spa pools, yeah. all sorts of stuff. Whereas we're selling a ten dollar price like item, and if they have totally. got and people don't want to walk away budget. empty handed no, from yeah, all this kind of thing. Yeah. You know, they buy a ticket, yeah. they want to go, they want to go leave with something. Yeah, no. Whereas at the food show, you're competing against ten other spice companies yeah. often. That's so nice. I like that. Mm. Thinking outside the box. We yes. shouldn't give away our secrets. No, take that out of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and we were hoping, I think we did them because we were hoping for a new customer base, like new audience, potentially yep. older age bracket. I don't maybe not, but. I think I think it mm. will be a, a mm. newer audience. Newer customer base. Yep. Yeah, cool. Is there anything else? I thought I had something, but no, that's it. No, I think that's... Yeah, what about you? Have you got anything coming up, Stacey? That... Well, yeah, so we're going to Wellington the week after next. That's quite exciting. I'm kind of... Um, Is it sold yeah. out? Uh, we've got, like, maybe a, probably a couple hundred tickets left. Oh. So we're really close. Awesome. Yeah, oh, well, when you by hear the time that we yeah, jump get on there, we'll be... Yeah. What's, is it Kitchen Takeover website? Yep, kitchentakeover.co.nz or just on the Instagram, Kitchen Takeover NZ. Cool. Um, Casey and Karina are on Breakfast TV tomorrow, so hopefully that will give us a bit uh, of a yeah. push yep. forward. Cool. Um, yes, yeah, so that's happening. Just kind of designing a couple of new pop-ups at the moment. So um, one, I'm kind of really interested, like I think I go through phases probably like you do with food, but I'm like really interested in sensory stuff at the moment um, and how you can kind of like, yeah, play with like perception and so sort of entertaining one maybe like around like a feast for your senses that might all be in the dark and yes, like using lots of different sense. sound yes. and like oh and, and smell yeah like oh, pumping the room full of like so cool. mushroom perfume or something yeah. like that I've yeah, never done that, that. no oh, I, I reckon it would idea. be really fun yeah. yeah so I'm looking at that and then yeah we're thinking about maybe doing like a real cool like viking feast like kind of for Christmas yeah. something like that yes. like real like you know meat yeah, yeah. Like medieval like medieval. kind of feeling. Like, <laughs> chug a beer and yeah, yeah, exactly. Pig with an apple in its yeah. mouth. Or yeah. Something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool. And, yeah, and then some tastings for truffles um, in the next couple of weeks. So that's kind of nice. Yeah, and awesome. then doing some stuff with flavors. So yeah, we are like looking at um, winter kind of getaways and experiences. Looking at a new festival for next year, maybe being a bit longer. Um, and yeah, just kind of like new ways to bring people to the bay around food and just how to like, yeah, mm. keep on like building the ecosystem here. Cause it's, you know, I feel like we've got a bit of traction and it's nice to have like some energy around it and people like yourselves and, and others who just kind of genuinely believe in it. And yeah. I think we can all feel the benefit of the region, you know, if we all work together and kind of identify it as a foodie destination, it can only be a good thing for everyone. Absolutely. We're well positioned as yeah. well, I think in terms of location for, for, we, know. we are. But then we have, you know, where's our seafood? Yeah, well, you yeah. You know, there's just so many things that could, Ugh. that 
I, I mean, I mean, hopefully, I really like as people seafood, get more and more into it. Well, how do we not have seafood? I really like seafood, so I look for it. But yeah, no, honestly, it's 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 all attached to politics essentially because mm. it's attached to the MPI um, quotas, oh, and so a lot of the smaller fishing charters sell their quotas to the bigger ones so that they can ship most of it offshore. And mm. it's a real problem for our like mm. our city. Like one of the things that like we've put into the strategy is having a seafood market in like um, just by the wharf, you yeah. know, in Tauranga CBD. Like every you know Friday morning or something. Yeah. How cool would that be? Oh, yeah. it would be and incredible. everyone would come and like the cargo yeah. shed could be activated as like you know yeah. Fish, yeah. Like a fish restaurant or whatever and it's those types of things that I think we we need to really focus on building to build that like differentiator and also like it's we live like we've got more marine coastline I think than any yeah. other region in New mm. Zealand like how can you not yeah. get fresh fish it's oh, just a crime it's a crime it's a crime I've had the most weird experience I tried to get oysters That's for right. my long lunch and I mm. rang around a few places and they're like just order them online they'll come next day I was like okay um, but I was on, I rang her back. I was like, look, I just really want, I need, to, these are for Friday. Yeah. So I'm going to, it's Tuesday. And she, I said, make sure you send them on, on Thursday. I just want to make sure I'm fit first and then totally. I'm not going to miss out. Put the order through and then got a notification that they've been shipped. And I was like, no, nah, I don't want them shipped. It was Monday, maybe Monday or something. Yeah. And then I emailed so and I was like, like, stop. And I thought that they'd stop the shipment somehow. I was like, oh, I must've got them in time. Cause I got home. There was no oysters. And then on like the Friday morning, I find behind my wheelie bins around the side of my house. Um, like 10 dozen or something. 10 okay. dozen oysters oh that had been sat there for four days oh, wow. <laughs> in the sun. <laughs> I just about cried. <sighs> and then on the Friday morning, I've sent everyone out that I could find. I'm like, you need to go and find me some oysters. And no one could find any. I was like, there's, we had to go and um, I think we raided picnickers and took all their oysters. <laughs> and that was all we could find. Well, I mean, it's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It just doesn't feel right, does it? No. And we need to sort it out. But I think, like, ultimately, it's just such a political bowling ball. And until we get more savvy and more respectful of, like, the fact that our kai should be able to be accessed by our locals, mm. like while it's all going offshore, it's just it's just wrong, it's just totally wrong. wrong. Yeah. Yeah. I did actually That's learn it. about that sort of quota selling around as well because one of our staff, her husband, oh yes, he's a crayfisher. He's, he's a crayfisher, and yeah, that something changed there for them recently, and all of a sudden he's like, oh, I guess I'm not working for the next few weeks. Um, he's interesting, eh? Because they caught their whole year's quota in like a couple of weeks. Couple of last weeks, year. so. Because she was know. only able to do some shifts and she's like, I can work full time because he's not going back because they've caught the whole quota. It's weird, it's weird eh? Yeah, it really. It is. It's very bizarre. And like, you know, I think it's it 100% should be sustainability first, but it should also be about like locals, locals being able to access. So if like 10% of the quota has to come mm. to New, like to New Zealand yeah. locals, that's how it should work, yeah. right? But instead it all just yeah. gets exported, frozen, mm. and like someone somewhere oh, else well. gets through it. It's like, oh, it's like a lot mm. of our food system, so it's all yeah. buggered up. Yeah. It's wrong yeah. town. Anyway. That's very sad. Anyway, Take okay. Box. We'll put that on the to-do list to fix it. Yes. <laughs> yes. Single-handedly. Right. Well, thanks, thanks for coming, Stacey. Oh, that's that's nice been to, awesome. Yeah, to be Thank you for having us. We, we refund someone's order every week uh, this oh, week. Cool. We've got, you've got Beth. Yeah. Can you use that's your face there? Idea. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. This, you this use the code from the podcast, which is Cherie Sucks, <laughs> and you get 10% off your order. <laughs> awesome. And yeah. you go into the draw every week to, um, to win your order refunded. Hey Beth, it's uh, Lauren and Shree here from the Pepper and Me Around the Dinner Table podcast. Thanks for your recent order and using the code Shree Sucks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you've, you've won a, your order refunded back to you. Wow, Have so a cool. good week. Have a great day. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Thanks very much, guys. Thanks, Have a great week. Yeah, Thanks very cheers, much. Guys. All right. See ya. Thanks for listening to the Pepper and Me podcast, guys. Make sure you like and subscribe. And if you're interested in any of the products that we're talking about, you'll find us at pepperandme.co.nz.